All right, hello everyone. Good morning, thank you for joining us. Given the title of our talk, I am sure and I'm wondering, many of you are wondering how you can build your Google Workspace career with Google Cloud credentials. You may be wondering what's covered on the certification exam, how can I best prepare, what resources are available to me? Well, over the next 45 minutes, we'll be covering how you can do just that. We'll also be answering your questions, so please keep those in mind, and we'll be sure to get to them near the end of the presentation. My name is Lauren, and I'm the content manager for the Google Cloud community, and I'm thrilled to be here today with Barry Schmel, technical curriculum developer and trainer at Google Cloud. Okay, Barry? great. And good, thanks, Lauren, and good morning, everyone. <clears throat> so as Lauren mentioned, I'm Barry Schmel, and I'm with the Learning Services team, and I've actually been at Google for almost 16 years now, and 16 years ago, it was all about Google Apps, which we now call Workspace, right? Or I think we called it some other things along the way. So I'm real curious, before we get started, how many of you have already taken the Workspace Admin Certification Exam? Anybody? Great, why are you here? No. <laughs> How many of you are signed up already, have made that commitment, and you're ready to take the exam? So this is really relevant. And hopefully the rest of you, how many of you are planning to get certified? Great, great. And Lauren and I have each uh, been certified, if not on Workspace, other exams as well. And just to let you know, whatever we're gonna talk about today is it's, it's similar type of setup for all of our other certifications. So if you're looking at Google Cloud Platform, we'll talk about you know, the materials or the resources we have available to you. So once again, thanks for being here, and that's a little bit about us. I'm sure you're curious about today's agenda. So we're going to have a quick overview about specifically the professional Google Workspace Administrator Certification. We'll show you some of the online resources. And then we're gonna go a little deeper into the specific topics, because you'll see with this particular certification, there are five sections or five topic areas that you're gonna be assessed on. So we wanna go over that. Um, we'll also go through some exam tips. As I mentioned, both of us have been here, gone through this experience, so we wanna share that with you. To be honest, a lot of the tips are around emotional readiness. Like, I, I don't know about you, as an adult, when I take an exam, I go back to you know, my SATs or my LSATs or whatever exams I had to take, so there's that stress factor. So we'll talk about how to breathe when you take an exam. We'll also go through some two sample questions so you have a sense of what to expect when you're going through the exam. Once again, the format of the questions are very similar, similar no matter what exam you're actually taking. Um, and then we have some planted questions, the most common ones that we see. We'll also open it up to everyone, and we'll, we'll uh, also show you or share with you some online resources, okay? So that's our bit of our agenda here. So why don't we start with the certification overview itself. And instead of just showing you the slide, Give me a moment, I'm gonna switch over to a demo. A lot of the information we have here is actually available on the certification page. You'll have access to all of this, this material. But I want you to see who we're targeting. This is for IT system administrators, uh, cloud system engineers. We used to refer to this as the collaboration engineering exam, but we've renamed it to the workspace admin because that's really what it's reflective of. Reflective of. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the exam is broken down into five areas of knowledge or areas that you're gonna be assessed on. And we'll talk about that a little bit more, but you can see those uh, listed there. Uh, one other thing I wanna mention about the exam is that uh, when you do click on register, this is actually managed through a third party company we work with called Criterion. Google, as well as many other professional companies that have certification exams, use that same uh, third party provider. So I just want you to know you'll have to set up an account on Criterion in order to actually sign up and take the exam, okay? So there's some good resources there available for you. I'm gonna go back to the slides. And then, as I mentioned already, there are five major topic areas that you're gonna be assessed on on the exam, and we'll walk through those for you. But I do want you to see that everything we're gonna show you in a slide is actually available on some of our online resources, okay? 
And then uh, just a little bit in general about the exam, I want you to notice that once you start the exam, you know, you get yourself set up wherever you're taking it. As soon as you click start the exam, it starts a two hour timer. So you have 120 minutes to take the exam. There's about 50 or 60 questions on the exam. That means you're, you know, pace yourself. That means about two, two and a half minutes per question. I think you'll find some of them you're gonna get right away, but some of them you may have to read a little bit more. So just remember you have two hours. Uh, the format is it's all multiple choice. There's no hands on here. Most of them will be single selection. Sometimes it might be multiple selection. Um, and there are no official prerequisites, but Lauren and I are gonna share with you what we think you really need to do to be prepared. Because some of you are new to workspace, so you may wanna go through all of the training on demand material. Some of you may already have some experience, so maybe you just wanna go through the quick review. And then finally, um, we do recommend having some experience um, because it's good to have that experience taking the exam as well. But could you just go through the on-demand material and do a little bit, of little bit more studying, a little bit of the hands-on labs? Yes, okay, cool. And we're gonna take questions a little bit later. So this is where it gets a little bit more interesting and um, we're doing good, right? <laughs> So um, we actually recommend these five steps to uh, preparing, taking the exam. And I actually wanna show you the next slide because we break it down in a little bit more detail. So the first thing is, is you probably wanna just assess where you are. So all of our certification exams, before you take any of the training, have a preparing for the exam. And I kinda wanna show you that here. And as you're pulling that up, I'll mention this step was really important for me when I'm taking the certification exam because it helps me evaluate how much extra time I need to study or to prepare in advance and leading up to that certification exam date. So don't discount this step, it's important and it's really helpful and will set you up for success as you're preparing. That's great. And I think some of you that are coming into this thinking, oh, I've been an administrator, I'm, I think I'm ready for the exam. This is a good little resource to go through. It's uh, basically all self-paced. There's you know, a couple of documents to read. There are a couple of assessments that you can take that really help you decide if you're prepared for it. Uh, some people that are going through training always like to maybe assess yourself first and maybe try this again at the end. But this is the newest thing we've introduced in 2023 to really help you, all of our customers, prepare for the certification exam, okay? Uh, the second area is about learning, okay? So um, once again, instead of showing you the slide, I'll just show you the resource. So in Cloud Skills Boost, as well as other learning platforms that we partner with, like Coursera, we still have stuff on Pluralsight. Some of this stuff you see on other platforms as well. There's specifically the Workspace Administrator Learning Path, and um, there's a lot of on-demand videos here, and there's actually a there's actually a quest here as well for you to take in terms of hands-on activities, okay? Um, I'm also a believer that anybody who is a system administrator is most effective if you understand the user experience. So we also have introduced, I think it was two years ago, uh, on-demand learning path for uh, G Suite user training. So this will walk you, and also your end users as well, if you wish, through all the various core services. It actually uses a case study. It's a fun, it's actually a fun training program. We won awards for it, okay? Have you taken it, walk, walk through it? I have, and I would recommend if you are an admin, you have a team, you have users, and you're trying to grow the adoption of Google Workspace, this is a great resource that you can point them to to take as well as an end user. So I think it's beneficial for both yeah. you as an admin to understand that end user experience and also for your end users to take it and uh, learn what's possible with, with Google Workspace. Yeah. Has anyone in here taken the, uh, the user training material? Some good stuff, yeah? Okay, <laughs> great, I'm glad to hear. Then it was worth our effort if at least one of you has gone through it. And then obviously a, mo a very important part, not just for the exam, but as an effective system administrator with Workspace is getting that hands on. So we do have through Cloud Skills Boost using our Quick Labs platform, a sandbox, you know, so there is a learning environment where you can actually go through, I would say, the most common admin tasks that you would through Workspace, okay? And then hopefully, at that point, oops, that's the community one, here we go, 
I meant to go back here. Hopefully at that point, you're ready and you're gonna go ahead and you can register for the exam, okay? Let me go back to our slides here. Okay, and now we're gonna talk about the community. Amazing. Right. So as you are preparing for your certification and continuous learning with Google Workspace, we invite you to join the Google Workspace community. Has anyone raise a hand heard of this? Okay, some familiar faces and hands here. Amazing, so we invite you to join this as well as your team. Um, there's no cost to join and this is the go-to destination for Google Workspace admins and professionals to connect with thousands of your peers, with Google Workspace experts and the Googlers who are making the products that you're using every day. So here you can hop into the forums, ask questions, share your knowledge and expertise. You can join weekly live digital events, many of which I'm hosting myself with product experts. And you can share your feedback about our solutions to help make them better through user experience research programs. Plus, if you are a customer under NDA, you can join a private area of the community called Customer Connect, where you can access our product roadmaps and visible changes documentation at any time. And we also host quarterly roadmap sessions with our product leaders. So we highly encourage you to join this community. There's no cost, and you can do it by scanning the QR code that's here or just piping that link in the top left of the screen into your uh, browser. So I'd love to see you there. Don't be shy. Say hello. I'd love to see you there. And we're actually very lucky to have Lauren here because she runs the community, and uh, so we thought it would be a great opportunity to have someone from our training, certification, and also the community here. Uh, it's a great resource. We were talking about this earlier that people come here after, you know, after you feel you know everything as an administrator, you join the real world, and all of a sudden you get those user questions or how to do things. This is a great place to go before you read even documentation. Okay. And the last thing I'll say is after you pass your certification, there's a space in the community for learning and certification specifically where you can share, hey, I passed, we'll congratulate you, recognize you, share your tips, and help others uh, as they're preparing for the certification as well, so. Bragging rights are definitely encouraged. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So let's go a little deeper into the exam guide. It's into the uh, various topics. As I mentioned, there are five specific areas, and those of you like that like to know this stuff is available online. Did I click over? All the slides we're showing you are coming from the, on, um, the online exam guide. And oh, let's see, did it open that up? Yes. And it actually gives you a lot of detail. We're just gonna tough, uh, touch the surface, but on managing objects, objects means things like users, calendar events, things like that in groups. It actually goes even deeper than we're gonna go here but um, I do wanna go through this with you all. So let's talk about um, object management. I know that sounds very impersonal, but there's a lot of things that you manage in the admin console. So in addition to users, there's also calendar resources. Who knows what a calendar resource is? Anybody wanna tell me, one-liner? Meeting rooms, exactly, exactly, exactly. So we're not talking about just managing people's calendars, and maybe you have calendars that are like shared projects, but also you have meeting rooms, event spaces that you might want, or a training room, for example. The executive suite may have tighter security than other resources. Also, you, you want to set up your groups to reflect your organization. Some people are also using groups for security access control, so that's very important. Uh, some of you may or may not be using shared drives. And then finally, we think it's important to remember some of you may be working with multiple domains. Maybe you have different subsidiaries in your company, or that's how you manage some of your security. Okay? The other five of the five resource areas of uh, uh, focus assessment are service, managing services. So services are, in addition to the core services like Gmail and Calendar, maybe there's additional services that, you're, that you want to enable as well. So for example, you may have contractors and maybe you don't want them to have access to all of the Google uh, services, and, but maybe for everyone else in your company you do. So setting up policies around services, um, also, a very important topic is troubleshooting. Most of the assessment and training around troubleshooting is around mail delivery, because this is what most users are experiencing. 
as well as access control. And I'll just jump in here to say that troubleshooting is some of the most common topics that we do see in the community. So there are the common questions, common troubleshooting, but there are also niche scenarios where you might be experiencing a similar issue or a scenario as someone else. And by sharing that, solve, helping solve each other's problems and uh, working together within that, you can help each other out and, and make solutions and, and solve those problems in the community together. Yeah, great. I know I use this for Google and also if anyone's worked with other products, I always go to the community first before I try to read the, some of the documentation. And then I think this is the last of the five topics, of course, security, access control, authentication. Are you gonna turn all multi-factor authentication? Are you using single sign-on? Um, DLP is data loss protection, data leakage protection. You know, do you wanna configure some of those policies through Gmail as well as, um, as, well as through Drive? Okay. So those are the five major areas of assessment. Oh, and then finally, excuse me, this is the fifth one. It's early in the morning, I can't count yet, is uh, supporting business initiatives. And this is, for example, Google Vault. Does anyone know what Vault is? Go ahead, anybody, just shout it out. Okay, some people think of it an archive, and it's more along the lines of, of data retention policies. How long do you want Google to retain your data, maybe you have compliance policies. Um, this is an important thing to be aware of because maybe not all of you are using the Google Vault service, but there will be some questions around that, okay? And actually, we're gonna go through some of the common questions that we get questions about, and we'll see what's covered, what isn't covered on the exam. But you will do, the well, first expectation is that you may be, there may be things you're not using that are available in Workspace, and, but they may be covered on the exam. So that's why looking at the exam guide is very important. It gives you a sense of what's going to be covered, okay? Um, very good. So let's go through some exam tips, okay? So as I mentioned, both Lauren and I have been through this exam as well as others. So the first thing is just become familiar with the features of the product that you're being tested on. I know that sounds pretty elementary, but you'd be surprised we have people that just wanna get a, yet another certification. So be, you know, be aware of this, especially if you're really an administrator, and we have a lot of that training available for you. And also, if you're new to this, make sure that you explore some of the features in the admin console. If you see something new, maybe explore that a little bit more. And uh, now we're gonna go into the area of, now that you've ta you're taking the exam, what are some of our recommendations? So as I mentioned earlier, for a lot of people, you already know this stuff, but you just get nervous taking the exam. So my first tip is remember to breathe. Remember you have 120 minutes for this. Um, it may not sound like a lot of time, but it is a lot of time, okay? Uh, so the first thing we, we recommend is read the question. Make sure you understand the question. And when we walk through one or two examples, you'll see they're usually structured that there's a scenario. You know, here's the situation what would you now do? Here's the task that you need to do, okay? So think about what you're being asked, okay? You're not necessarily being asked to recreate the scenario because it already exists, but what is it that you're actually being asked to do? Focus on what's the question. Um, as I mentioned, it's, they're all multiple choice, and then if you don't know the answer right away, what we recommend is eliminate the ones that you know are absolutely wrong, as we're gonna do. What that does is it frees your brain from all those distractors, as they're called. So you can just focus on, oh, maybe these, one of these two are right, maybe reread the question again, because I, I wanna let you know that one of those is the right answer, okay? It may not be the one that you think would be the right answer, but you got it. one of those is the best answer. That's how I look at it, okay? And if you're still stuck, what we recommend is mark the question for review so that you can bookmark it. Because what happens is when you're done with the 50, 60 questions the first time, it presents a page that lists all the questions again, and the ones you've bookmarked have an asterisk. So if you're feeling stuck, go back to those at the end. So try to get through all of the questions once, your best attempt, bookmark the ones that you really are stuck with, and then come back to those and review them. And the other thing I want to do is don't overthink it. Use common sense. Some of you may be coming from an, uh, a more technical background, maybe integration. Those are not the type of questions you're gonna have here. 
So don't overanalyze the question. One of them is the best answer. Okay? So at a very high level, those are our recommendations. Okay? So let's go through uh, two sample questions. I think we're doing good with time. Yep. Okay. So as I mentioned, this is a very classic type question where there's a scenario on top. I'm not going to read this out loud. You're welcome to read this. And then notice the second half is actually the question. You've been tasked with creating 80 new accounts from a list you receive from the director of the intern program. What is the minimum you need, you must do to create the accounts segmented away from any employee accounts? So there's a couple of interesting keywords there. The minimum you need to do, okay. Uh, create accounts segmented away. So we don't want to say create a separate org, right? But that's what it's indicating there from the rest of your employee accounts, okay? So really read this scenario, but the question is really what you're being asked. And once again, we'll share these materials with you. And then in this case, this is not a real question. It may have been an old one that we pulled. And now you have, what, four options here, okay? So I'm gonna be silent for a moment, let you read those options. Hopefully, people can read those. <laughs> and you may get the answer right away, which is fine. Maybe you don't. Uncomfortable silence. OK, I'm just going to go ahead. So A was the right answer, OK? But we're also giving you clues as to why B, C, and D were actually wrong, OK? So we've highlighted, so with B, create an organizational unit with Active Directory. So it specifically says in the scenario, you're not using Active Directory, right? Isn't that what it says? Okay. Um, C is wrong, enter the interns in the column org unit path, but um, you have to create the organization first. Okay, so with, if you're working, when you do the upload, the bulk upload, it doesn't create the organizational unit for you. You have to create that one first. So even though you put that in the column to identify the organizational unit, if it doesn't exist, it'll generate an error message, okay? And once again, anything related to Active Directory, we're not, we're not using that here. The whole idea was you're creating these users, you're managing them separately or directly within Workspace, okay? So, cool. Sorry to walk by you there. No, and just as you're transitioning to the second question, I do want to call out that on that certification homepage that we've been coming back to, and that's also listed as a resource in your event app with this session, there are a number of other sample questions that you can test yourself, test your knowledge, get an understanding of um, where you may need to study a little bit further. Yep, I'll be your demo dolly here. <laughs> and we're going back here. Hopefully that refreshed up there. There are review sample questions you can do here. It actually uses a Google form, and you can retake these sample exam as many times as you want, okay? Now, my, I wanna give another tip here on, since you mentioned this, thank you, is that I have found using this isn't just a way of gauging your knowledge, but like I said, a lot of us are not used to taking exams. It's a great way of just getting into that mode of reading a question, trying to answer multiple choices. So it's really good to sort of like uh, retrain yourself almost on that process, okay? So don't just think of it as, do I know the answer, I'm ready for the exam. It gives you some practice in that mode of multiple choice questions. I've even had people say, I'm just gonna set a timer for one minute for each question so that you can learn how to pace yourself. Because I will admit that I think the hardest part of any of our certification exam is those emotional blockers and the stress factor in doing that. Because really, you probably know this if you studied it. Okay, we all just get really nervous, like we are right now up here. <laughs> okay, um, so we do have one more sample question. There we go. Uh, so once again, there, the first part of the question is a scenario. Recently, sensitive research information was accidentally shared with an unauthorized vendor via Google Drive by a member of one of your research teams at Symbol Health. The CEO has asked you to revisit the Google Drive settings to tighten security, okay? 
So the real question is, however, collaboration with several partner companies that are involved in drug development cannot be impaired. So the partner companies are also using Google Workspace. What configuration changes must be made to Google Drive settings in the admin console to improve security posture of Symbol Labs? So there's a lot of stuff in there. That's probably why it's no longer in the exam. We have tried to simplify some of the questions a little bit, you know, especially if English is not your first language. Okay. By the way, the exam is only available in? English and Japanese. Right, okay. So once again, we do try to make them a little bit simpler to read, especially if your uh, English is your second language or, you know. Anyway, so here are the options that you have, A, B, C, or D. I'll give you a moment to read those. Maybe you got it right away. Maybe you're eliminating a few. I'm glad we have the answers up here. <laughs> okay. And this one, the answer is actually C. So let's see what that says. So from Google Drive sharing settings card, Add the partner company's Google Workspace domains to the allow domain list, okay? So in um, Google Workspace, you have the ability to sort of limit which company domains that you're able to share with. And you can set that up also by organizational unit. So you could have it company-wide, or you could set it up with certain departments can only communicate with certain external domains. We see this also very common with education. I think we used to call it, uh, I think we called it the greenhouse effect, where you have an organization for just your students and for your faculty, and who can the students communicate with might be restricted, whereas maybe the faculty can, can communicate with anyone internally or externally. So a lot of companies ask for this type of functionality, okay? Very effective if you're working with vendors in particular. Maybe you want to limit who can work with what, when, which, which vendors based upon their domains. Okay. Cool. So now we're going to go through a couple of uh, common questions that we see. The, these are planted, and then we will open them up to everyone else. Yeah, and just to say that these are questions that have come directly from the community, and we've pulled the ones that we see most often, um, but we'll be sure just after this to get to any questions that you have, so please hold on to those. So our first question is, is there a fee for the certification? And yes, it is $200, and this is listed on the certification homepage, which is linked here, and again, that resource is in the event app if you haven't checked that out yet. But as a fast follow, our second question is... Oops. Oh. <laughs> bad. There we go. Is there any vouchers or discounts that you can receive for taking the certification? And the answer is yes, it does depend. So a couple of different options that we recommend. If you are a Google Cloud partner, we encourage you to take advantage of the Partner Certification Kickstart program. This is an online training program to help you prepare for the certification. And once you complete a number of required activities and going through the courses, then we'll send you a voucher to take the certification at no cost. So partners, please do check that out. But an exciting opportunity for you here as a Google Cloud Next attendee is that for attendees with a three-day pass, you qualify for Innovators Plus. So if you haven't heard of this, this is a subscription that comes with a host of benefits, one of which is a free certification voucher to take the exam. There's also another benefit where you can have 500 credits to Google Cloud Skills Boost, which Barry has been mentioning, to get hands-on experience and prepare for the exam. So this QR code here and also that link you see on the slide is how you can activate your Innovators Plus subscription if you haven't already. And if you're having any questions about that process, don't, don't go unanswered. Please meet us in the Innovators Hive and the Innovators team, myself, Barry, or the community team will be happy to set you up and make sure that you can take advantage of those benefits. Great. And by the way, that voucher is valid for any certification exam. So Cloud Digital Elite Leader, yay, I lead that program, or Workspace or any of the other Google Cloud Platform certifications. Okay, cool. Let's see. Oh, 
I get to do the next one. So let's see what the next question is. Can we choose our language? So we've already answered that. The answer is yes. Your choices are English um, or Japanese. And um, when does the certification uh, expire? That's a very common question. So it's good for, for two years. You'll be notified through Criterion. Remember, once again, that's that third party uh, resource that we use for um, exams, for all of our exams, and they will notify you, okay, based upon the email that you set up for the certification. One of the other common questions we get is, what email address do I have to use? So you can actually identify, here's my corporate email, but you could also use your personal Gmail account, okay, um, because we all know why we want to do that, right? Okay, cool. Let's see, what's the next one? Ah, so this one is, what is the Preparing for Workspace Admin Journey course? And when do you recommend taking it? Well, if you were paying attention in the beginning, <laughs> we talked about that, that is a course, it's sort of just it, take it in the beginning, right before you get started on your learning journey. They're available in all of our certification programs, and it sort of helps you to figure out what's gonna be covered, Maybe I'm ready in certain areas. It really is there to help you identify what we call you know, knowledge gaps. Where do I really need to focus my attention in studying? So we recommend taking that in the beginning. Um, okay, what level of detail do we need to understand Google Cloud Directory Sync, okay? Or Google uh, Suite Password Sync on the exam? So these are services or, or migration tools that customers use that are working with Active Directory. You know, maybe you're a large company, you're still managing your users and resources on Active Directory, but you also want that to be automatically synchronized in G Suite, okay? So you don't need to know a lot of details of it, but you need to understand what it does, maybe some of its limits. So there will be a couple of, you know, there might be a question on there about it. I recommend, even if you never use it, you wanna be knowledgeable about this but um, it is a tool that exists outside of the admin console. So customers may want to add, do most of their user management and group management in Active Directory. Um, Google Cloud Directory Sync will synchronize what's there and add and delete users based upon those policies in G Suite, I mean in Workspace, okay? The same thing with passwords. Maybe you wanna manage all your passwords in Active Directory and you want those reflected uh, in Google Workspace. And before covering this next question is just on Active Directory, we do have a live session coming up with the community that's focused specifically on using Google Workspace with Active Directory and with Azure. So please, um, if you are interested in learning more about that, check that event out in the community. So our next question is also about what is covered on the exam. So do you need to have knowledge of App Script for the exam? So similarly, you should have an understanding of what App Script is, when you should use it, and why it's valuable. However, it's unlikely that you're going to have to read or understand App Script itself. So we do have a resource here that we recommend you check out and be familiar with. That's the Admin SDK API documentation. Um, but again, uh, just make sure you understand understand how and when it's important to use App Script and when you might want to mm -hmm. use it. And if you really are interested in it, we actually have some hands-on labs using it as well. So you can add on a little bit of workflow or functionality with, within um, your, your workspace user experience. Amazing, so this question again, if you uh, have been listening, is there any type of quick lab environment where I can get hands-on experience without impacting my production environment? And the answer is yes. So that is Google Cloud Skills Boost. So that's a series of hands-on labs that you can take without impacting your own environment or your own accounts. And it's a great way to get that experience. Um, and you can also earn a skill badge. So with that, if you're taking the hands-on labs, you can earn that skill badge, share it on your socials, and it's a great way to document and to solidify that experience and that knowledge that you've gained. And by the way, if you're activating that Innovator Plus you know, subscription we told you about, these are a great hand, you can do all the labs you wanna do you know, during the duration of that subscription. So once again, if you're curious, we feel, we believe in continuous learning. Even if it's not covered on the exam, it's great to know this stuff. Okay. Oh, 
there I am. So once again, this goes along the line, additional third-party tools. So GAM is, um, this, what does it stand for? It stands for Google Apps Manager, okay? So this is a little scripting tool that's been around for a long time. I, I remember it from 15 years ago. Um, you don't need to know about this, but it is a cool tool to know about. Um, it actually uses in the back end, it's a scripting language that sort of lets you automate certain operations because it uses the back end workspace APIs to do operations for you. You have to authenticate yourself before you use the tool, but it's really cool, but you don't need to know anything about it for the exam, okay? And let's see how many more, oh. So this other one? Yep, I yep. think this is our last one, and then we'll open it up for Q&A, so um, have your questions ready. So what is the difference between Google Cloud Learning Path that's on Google Cloud Skills Boost and then Coursera or Plural Site? Um, so great question. These courses are the same across each of the platforms, but the one difference is that Google Cloud Skills Boost element with the hands-on labs, which is only available through the Google Cloud Learning Path experience. And that's how you can earn those official skill badges. So at the end of the day, it's ultimately up to you which platform that you choose, but um, that is just keeping in mind that consideration with the skill badges and hands-on labs. And the innovator stuff, Innovator Plus, subscription is gonna work with Google Cloud Skills Boost, just to let you set that as an expectation. Exactly. Cool, so that's the end of our canned questions. I think we wanted to just do a quick wrap up and then we'll open it up to. Perfect. So we know we've covered everything. We still have about eight more minutes, but we don't wanna forget any of these resources. Exactly, yep. So we'll just take one more minute to share. These are a summary of the resources that we've covered and touched on today. Again, if you are snapping photos, you can look them up, but also they're in your event app. So in the resources section with, your, um, with this session. So that first one is the one that we've been coming back to for most of today's session. It will link out to many of the other resources that we've been talking about. So if you come away with one resource today, uh, that should be the one. Um, and then I think we just have um, one more slide about what's next after this session. So if you have any additional questions after today, you can meet us, the learning and certification we'll team, the community team, the workspace product team in the Innovators Hive, and we're, we'd be happy to have a conversation, meet you, and answer any additional questions. Of course, check out the other workspace sessions. And then, of course, I'd love it to see you join the community if you haven't already with that QR code. Um, again, don't be shy. Please say hello. I'd love to hear from you. And great resource for follow-up questions or any issues you're having as well. And then finally, at Google, we say feedback is a gift. So we definitely want to get your feedback. Um, if you have the um, Google Next app installed on your phone, it's, um, it's very easy to get access to the um, online survey. So with that, we want to thank you.